This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to optimize your HP Z620 workstation for gaming or uh, other high-end computing. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com, click on the blog, search Z620. Once you do that, you're going to find our blog page that will show you all of the hardware um, upgrade ideas that we have tested um, and so you can use this as a, as a resource. We don't sell anything. Everything, all the information is free. Um, and this system is pretty important because there's, there are two different system boards. Um, and depending on which system board you have, it will determine what processors you can install. And we, we have all the information here. So check it out. Um, but let's get to the build. All right. So our system um has a gen 1 system board our z620 that we're using so we have to go to green pc gamers and we had to pick one of the cpus that'll work with this gen 1 system board gen 1 v1 depends on however you want to call it um, so we're going to do the 8 core xeon e5 2687w um, processor we chose it because it's a high clock speed uh, cpu and it does have eight cores um, so this one's 3.1 gigahertz and it has a max turbo frequency of 3.8 gigahertz, which is pretty awesome. And it's going to work really well for gaming. Um, we have 24 gig of DDR3 4900R memory. Now, because this is a V1 chassis, that memory is going to clock down to 1600 megahertz based off of what the CPU can support. And we are going to do a 256 gig Samsung solid state drive as a boot device. Um, and this, uh, now we're getting to the actual upgrades that we're installing to this system. Uh, we are adding a 500 gig Western Digital Black NVMe.2 solid state drive, and we do need an, a PCI adapter uh, because this system uh, does not have a, a NVMe slot on the system board. Um, and then one other thing to note on that is we cannot boot to this device because the Z620 does not uh, support booting to an NVMe drive. That's why we have our 256 gig SSD. We'll go further into the NVMe as we as we uh, build the system. Uh, and then our other big upgrade is we are swapping from a Quadro graphics card. We're going to an EVGA GTX 1080 super clocked uh, 8 gig graphics card, um, which is going to do most of the uh, workload when it comes to the gaming. All right, so let's get to the build here. We'll show you how to install the uh, graphics card and the NVMe card. So here's our system. Um, We'll zoom in on some of the components. As you can see, this system has two USB 3.0 parts on the front, and that's awesome if you plan to do any VR because uh, they do need they do require USB 3.0 slots. All the uh, accessories. Here's our NVMe SSD. Um, it's Western Digital. It works. Um, we'll get further into that as we go through. And here's our SuperClock GTX 1080. All right. So here's a look at the back of the chassis before we've installed the components. We've already removed the other components. So we're going to put our NVMe drive on the bottom, and then our graphics card will eat up the other two PCI slots above. A um, bunch of different USB ports, two more USB 3.0 ports, gigabit network, which is awesome. Um, and we do have sound as well. All right, so we're going to remove the side panel, take a look inside the chassis. So this system, um, you can see the I.O. ports. It has an over 800-watt power supply. And that's great for that GTX 1080 card. Um, so it's more than enough power. Um, it's a uh, standard single socket CPU system. Um, we have eight memory slots. There's an option right there to go with a memorizer so you can have two processors and then it gives you a few more memory slots. Um, this is where we've installed our solid state drive here. There's three, three and a half inch slots. And so that's our SSD. We'll just go ahead and reinstall that. And that'll be our boot device. Uh, like I said, you cannot boot to the NVMe drive. Um, but first, we're going to install our graphics card. So this is the GTX 1080. And this does require an 8-pin auxiliary power adapter. And you have to plug that in. If you don't do it, the system's going to hold on post. So here's the adapter. This actually came with the card. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on, depending on the manufacturer of the card that you buy. So luckily, this GT, uh, this Z620 had the two six-pin adapters available to plug this into. So we'll go dual six-pin to eight-pin, and this is going to be more than enough for our power. All right, so we've got that installed. Now we have to actually install our card. 
All right, so to access the PCI uh, slots, we do have to remove this metal retention clip. Now there's two little black pieces that we have to push down, as you can see. And then once you do that, it, it'll allow us to add cards to the PCI slots or IO slots. Okay, so this card's pretty heavy, so all you really have to do is line it up and let it drop into place. Sometimes you have to help you know, where the PCI brackets are. So line it up like so, and then drop it into place. And then once you've done that, it should be securely installed. Then obviously we need to do our 8-pin auxiliary power. And that plugs in like so. And now this card, this is um, just the regular GTX Kennedy SC, which is nice because it allows for plenty of room to shut your side panel. If you go with one of those FTW options or a bigger card, it can be tough to install this car, that those types of cards. So stick with the, a card or, or look at Green PC Gamers, and uh, we'll show you the cards that we've installed that work and that fit. All right, so now we do, we're going to install our NVMe drive. Um, we just showed you the model of the drive, and then there's a, the model of the actual adapter card if you want to copy what we've installed. We've also as have the ad uh, other adapter cards on Green PC Gamers. So this card just drops in really easily, and we're going to go in the bottom I.O. slot. So again, this, this cannot be used as a bootable device, but the reason why we want to use this still is we're going to put all of our big programs, our game libraries, everything uh, you know that we want to run or open up super fast, we're going to put on that NVMe drive. So even if we can't boot to it, that's fine. We, we can still use the speed because... That drive's gonna run, that NVMe SSD is gonna run three to five times faster than an internal SATA SSD. All right, so here's a look at the back of the chassis. Got our graphics card installed, three display ports, one HDMI and DVI, and we've already seen the other ports in the back of the chassis. All right, so we already had Windows 10 installed in this system. Um, so the first step after you install these components is go to nvidia.com, go to your browser, go to NVIDIA. You need to install the latest driver for this graphics card. So you can do that by going to NVIDIA, click on GeForce Drivers. Um, you can either do download the automatic update, or you can just go find it manually. That's the way we normally do it. It's a GTX 10 series card. Now, if you install a different card, um, basically, if it's NVIDIA, you go to the same page and find your card. Download the latest driver, install it. I definitely recommend using the GeForce Experience. It'll allow you to optimize whatever games you're playing um, based off of you know NVIDIA's recommendations, and you can still tweak it off after that. So this is what the GeForce experience looks like. It'll find all of your games and uh, allow you to optimize them. Okay. So we're almost finished, uh, but we still have to go in and enable that NVMe drive. So right-click on Start, go to Disk Management. If you're running Windows 7 or a different OS, you just have to go to Disk Management. And we have some old partitions on the drives that we, that we on that NVMe that we can't delete, so we're just going to use the rest of the volume, and we're going to name that super fast drive. And then once we uh, click OK, we can now we have access to that drive. So our Steam library, or you know whatever games you play, whatever libraries, if you have some big programs you want to put on there, put all of your big programs on there because they'll open up way faster than they would with a conventional uh, SATA drive or SSD. All right, so we're going to do a benchmark test. And basically, we have everything on either high or ultra settings. Uh, and this is a game called Tom's Clancy's The Division. Um, it has an awesome little benchmark built into it. Um, it uses tons of CPU and tons of GPU. Um, so essentially, with a game like this, we're hoping for 100 FPS or higher. Um, or close now we are doing this test through OBS so at the end of this you can basically normally add 10 percent more onto the FPS that we're getting because we're using an HDMI port not a DVI or a display port so it doesn't give us a completely accurate view of what the FPS should be but it's pretty close um, especially with a 1080 I mean it's a really good card when it comes to gaming all right, so we average 94, um, average GPU 96%, average CPU is 43%. That's pretty low for this game. Um, but it's because we have an eight-core CPU installed. Um, now, 
like I said, we can probably add about 10% onto this because we are using OBS to capture this. And so we're losing um, some of the frames because of that HDMI port. Uh, but uh, all in all, uh, the frames are good. Um, if you don't have the budget for a 1080, um, you know, you can get a 1060 or a 1070 tweak your settings. You can still get about 100 FPS with this system. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, please consider hitting the subscribe button. That helps us out big time. And definitely um, check out GreenPCGamers.com. Join our gaming community. Um, and thank you so much for watching.